الرحمن الرحيم من لم يشكر الناس لم يشكر الله in the name of Allah <coughs> the all merciful the ever merciful the next i recite the saying of the prophet the meaning is great if you can't thankful to your kind person you will never be thankful to almighty allah so in this perspective first of all i am grateful and thankful to professor uh, i do to inviting me for this most important conference and this is i think sixth conference and uh, when i memorize his efforts nationally and internationally particularly in the conference and uh, i am confident that this can do only by i do and uh, my colleague in pakistan in other country and uh, we think and uh, we are confident for this that he is not only a uh, international scholar but he is distinguished international scholar and i am also thankful for his patience and uh, now i will start with this the next just a minute uh the topic is my understanding conflict and tension in present day now present day anatomy and solution by transforming words into action because the speeches are there very good speeches the literature are there very good literature but the difficult is how to transform our words into action how we can be able to uh, continue this to implement these things how you can, if you have conflict first of all we have to know what is the conflict and then tension what is the tension every person is in tension so we sometimes they please don't give a, a take tension give tension <laughs> another Uh, uh, so in this my uh, presentation, uh, I discuss this and uh, present the solution. So how for this we can provide to our present world tolerance, harmony, peace, and love. Okay, now start, please. This is abstract. Abstract is only uh, the historical. <coughs> by ground of these understanding conflict and tension and particularly i discussed about the difference of my country pakistan because we are in very tense situation not nowadays before uh, from the beginning of our establishment so uh, people of the world and my colleague know in what situation and what scenario we are going and what we are facing and how we are accommodate with this yes now this is pakistan flag the green is showing the muslim community and the white is showing the other community so we have muslim and other communities and uh, it means we have diversity but diversity in one next this is the map and this is the area this is the area where we have the conflict near to you don't you know everyone who near to afghanistan this is the area this is the area from this is capital and this is a tribal area the tribal area means the area under the pakistan but they have their own system their own law their own regulation their own custom and in their society they implement this pension next this is population of pakistan and uh, in this population how we compromise to each other population language and ethnic groups in pakistan there are three three dimension it means languages 
ethnic groups both and we try to accommodate each other yes next this is federal and state area which i called and this is north wazirstan south wazirstan kurum adal this is the area where nowadays we have problem and our army is controlling this area to provide peace to our country next okay this is now the first is in the name of <coughs> these are necessary have to i will explain you will you can make i will explain in this pakistan constitution we have our constitution the last constitution in 1972 and we deal our all uh, affairs with our constitution and the main is constitution there is a world test there will be no law against quran and sunnah you know against the our basic book quran and the tradition of the prophet no there will be any other law and we will produce and establish the law according to this perspective next number okay this is in this time this is this time of mutual order the heritage date is may be bright more no. tension and these conflict we are trying to solve with interfaith dialogue our main thing is perspective interfaith <coughs> and we have interfaith and intrafaith intrafaith means among your own uh, groups for example in uh, muslim sunni shia and interfaith means with other religion christian jews hinduism buddhism sikhism all so in this way we because they have, and we ask them and we discuss them our religious uh, literature your religious literature they have the solve because every in literature there is suggestion there is recommendation how to maintain the peace love and harmony among the people of a and uh, people of a society people of a country and at large people of the world next ah the main thing and go we will go on universal human brotherhood this is most important to resolve the conflict universal brotherhood means i mentioned that <coughs> all the human being they are is a one thing our professor and pura all uh, all the type of one thing because about to islamic perspective <coughs> the all the people created from one father one mother and they have distributed into tribe into custom into community into other thing and into uh, all the religion and they adopted the religion as their ideology how to spend their life how to uh, deal with their life how to deal their problem how to deal their affair they have every it means every person every community is need a religion this is not question which is the religion is better which is the religion not better, but religion so when we came to the religion then we will go to solve our problem through the religion next this this is perspective of islamic uh, uh, teaching that in islamic teaching all the muslim are brother to each other and brother means if one brother is faced a problem other brother is will be involved he will be share their problem and it means if you know the every any problem to each other, to other brother you will go to that but this is not the limit of the muslim among the muslim 
the limit is there is all over the world there is any person in problem the duty of every muslim to support him to solve their problem to share their problem and to have their help in any because we are uh, because the main thing is human being humanitarian ground humanitarian <coughs> ground is we, we will think on the humanitarian ground it, it means we will be able to solve each other problem and to help each other next ah, this is most important point universal peaceful coexist how possible universal peaceful coexist it means where are you you are living with coexist you will adjust yourself and you will accommodate each the other this is universal coexist not without a discrimination of religion region and race no discrimination only you will try to to be a universal a member of universal humanity when you are thinking this and there is be no question religion region and caste and other thing so the main point is universal peaceful coexistence because our universe is demand peace for fun how we provide peace if we accommodate each other and adjust ourselves in their scenario in their uh, culture in their uh, atmosphere there will be there will be no problem it means universal peaceful coexistence is most important in our present world okay in connection the work of amber ah uh, yes it means the civilization we have different civilization a lot of it means the mushroom of civilization my civilization if i own my own civilization and not humanize our civilization other people will not come to my civilization if i don't recognize other he will never recognize me it means this this is a both not one way traffic this is both both way if you want to protect yourself you protect to each other if you want to give the people love first you have to give them love if you want to have peace to uh, live in a, a peaceful environment you have to provide other people the peaceful environment yes okay this is also uh, different different uh, differences for this that uh, the conflict why conflict occur why why conflict and tension occur when we think about our own we think about our own and not our society and our other people so, so in this perspective in our country particularly we are trying to understand each other to understand conflict and tension of each other why he is he person is in tension what is the problem is religion problem his psycho problem his food problem his living problem his education problem what is the problem it means if you want to know understand conflict and tension you have to study what is the demand of this person and the demand is very uh, different to different people. so it means we have a large study large understanding to know what is the problem what is the tension what is the his and how we can help him and why he involved in this problem why he came to this problem because man should be clear he is in he love a peaceful environment why he involved why he the uh, involvement tension why he was in conflict why he was so first of all we have to understand why this uh, this thing occur and why we have to face this and we have to solve this Excellent. This is also continuing. That uh, first of all, in our perspective, this is the duty of <coughs> to provide the fundamental need to any every person. It means the 
where is their state? This is a state, the uh, important uh, uh, responsibility of state to provide each other, every person, every citizen, without any discrimination, to provide him education, uh, food, protection of his life, his wealth, his uh, kids, and his family. So the government is responsible uh, for this. It means if there's any unfairness, any tension, it means government is not fulfilling their duty. Government is not uh, uh, fulfilling their duty and he is not sincere to protect their citizens. So if you want to uh, save your citizens from to the government is most important. And we, if we study the world history, whenever there is welfare state, there is problem is minimum, minimum, minimum. Yes. Okay. And uh, when I asked, uh, I said it uh, uh, words into action. How? If we found our problem, our uh, tension, how we produce <laughs> the same? So in this way, time to time, we arrange seminars, conferences like Professor Ayurveda to address these things, to address our conflict, to solve our conflict, to address our tension. For example, the topic of our this study, new <coughs> discover of the study of Sira by Muslim scholar in the world. Because in Muslim community, he practically go to the saying of the Prophet, Uswai Hassan. So, first of all, we arrange the new, new dimension, new things, new thinking about this. Now, number two, Islamic society and a civil society, a direction for Pakistan. Is it, it is Islamic society and civil society. What's the difference? Civil society is Islamic society or Islamic society is civil society. It means if we say Islamic society, it is civil society. And he is responsible for all the civilian, for all the person of their society because the main object is to establish a healthy society. Number three, international humanitarian law, Islamic perspective. What Islam is about international law? Many international humanitarian law. All over the world, there are human beings. What are the laws? And we discuss at large what are the laws of different countries and they are proper to the problem or not. So in this way, uh, from all the scholars, we uh, got a very fruitful thing. A new paradigm in social sciences and in social sciences. In a new paradigm in social There are sciences, science and social sciences. We are, most of our uh, things are discussion with social science. Any social sciences, the, 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 the new paradigm. Now, what is the demand of social sciences? What demand social sciences will have? And what we solve our problem from social science? Social sciences mean our way of life, our political system, our social system, our economic system, and our international law, our national law, all things, this the new paradigm. Tolerance, culture, and law. If tolerance, culture, and law. What is culture? What is the law? And how we, we will be able, we can, we can do tolerance, we promote tolerance through our culture and our law. Because we have different culture. The promotion of tolerance with our culture is different, with Christian culture is different, with Jew culture is different, with Hindu culture is different. So together, how we can uh, promote this culture and law? We have must law for tolerance. Because when I say the government is responsible, government will be responsible when there will be law. If there is no law, government will be not responsible. The other is religious tolerance and social <laughs> development <coughs> in our basic of a strong society. If you 
are going to discuss our conflict and tension. Through this, we have, we must have a strong society. And which will be the strong society? Religious tolerance and social development. They are both connected to each other. Religious tolerance means from the religious side and social development. If you don't have social development, you can't be able to move forward tolerance among our people. People, if people are face problem, they are not going to do it. Your tolerance. The other is religious tolerance. Uh, and the number ninth is, please read it from here. Sorry. Number seven. It's the same. No, 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 no. Please go back. This one. Religious tolerance. So, maybe this one, this one. Eight. Uh, number eight. Modification in curriculum. Uh, demands and demand respect. in prospects. Uh, this is most important. Because, particularly in my country, this is most problem. We have two kinds of curriculum. One is school, college, and university. Second is madaris in mosque. And this is a great problem, great gap. And we struggle a long time, struggle from right, to bring the Madaris people into mainstream of education. And it's not possible without a modification in curriculum. It means, it means not that we must uh, finish Quran, we must finish Sunnah from the Madaris. No, no. We can recite the Quran, we can do the Sunnah, but according to our present demand, according to our present necessity. So in this way, uh, we arrange a seminar to, uh, uh, to gather for the uh, people of Madaris and for the people of university. It means modern uh, education and education of Madaris, basic education. So they can, if they both uh, play their role for the reformation of society, there will be no tension, there will be no any conflict. Number nine, interfaith dialogue. In the fact of dialogue, the milestone for world peace. World peace. This is most important. Interfaith. Milestone for world peace. What is a milestone? This is most which is a milestone for world peace. Because world demand peace. And it is only possible for interfaith dialogue. So we sit together on the table and we did it. I will show you the picture. We did it from a different region, from the different uh, school of thought, and we uh, invited people. They came, they discussed, and very like, like my brother said, Professor Ayurveda, families in a family. We are we are a member of family. So in this way, interfaith dialogue a milestone. If we are thinking about the peace of the world. We should go, we must go to the interfaith dialogue. Yes. Next. Okay. Now I will say. For this, what we did. Which my topic is world into H. We said that is interfaith dialogue must be. These must be. And what we did for. First of all, there is, you know, so many people from different, from different culture, from Hindu culture. You said your subject. Yes, your yeah. Nikos. Your subject is <laughs> in Washington. <laughs> it is Professor George Mackey. And from uh, other, in it there is Jews, Christian, Hindu, and Muslim. And this dialogue, about one month, in the Catholic University of America, Washington, under the supervision of late Father George Mackey. And after this, they published a very good book. And what is what was the fruit of these dialogues? Next. Yes? No? No? Only one? Yeah, no. No, no, no. <laughs>
three beads, the next one, you want to try the uh, next one. Uh, this, uh, this, one. this is John McLean in Pakistan, <coughs> in University of Karachi. He came there, his lecture, only on the promotion of toler tolerance in different cultures. He stayed there, and, he and this is our vice chancellor and other people who recognize his services. And uh, three times, John McLean came. And we invited because he is expert of Christianity culture, Christian literature. So we want to learn something. Yes, next. Ah, Kankuriyam. What is Kankuriyam? Kankuriyam is that if we want, first of all, two things only. First of all, we have to address the conflict and our tension and process. Then we think, how kind of these problems? How can we solve? Then we go to our culture, not only our culture, not only our teaching. We have to explore all the teaching, teaching of the, all the religion, all the world religion. Therefore, we have included in our curriculum of university the study of world religion. Study of world religion. So our students understand the other religion, other teaching, other problems. So concluding this day, if nowadays we want to establish harmony, peace, tolerance on the world, first of all, we will have to explore our problem and then address them by practical, not by words. We will transfer our world into practical. In this way, I think we will be able to provide peace to our human being. Thank you very much. Oh, great timing, uh, great professor, thank you very much. So we have even more time for discussion yes. now. So, yes, I will not uh, postpone questions. We will share, professor. but, but uh, usually I don't use the uh, word is question. I use the word, now we are coming to the discussion. <laughs> because we are family. So let's, let's open the family discussion. We are family. <laughs> with Professor Suleyman. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor. Thank you for your uh, very interesting uh, presentation. Uh, I'm actually involved with this topic, especially the current yeah. uh, day or current steps of my research. So I'd like uh, to, it is not a question, but just it's comment and just to give me your opinion about it. Yeah. So the first part related to the gap between Quranic texts and its application. Yes. So for example, you mentioned in the Surah al qudrat it is allowed, I say, the text in its uh, classical Arabic language. Yes. Uh, so, we agree that the most just according yes. to God is the person who is taqi. Taqi is being the person who doesn't bother the other. Yeah. The person who respects the other. Yes. The person who lives in peace with the other. So, why this gap between the Quranic text and its application? in our society. So this is the first point. The second point is, the message is to promote peace. So why the conflict and the quarrel between sex, especially in the Pakistan society? Yes. Okay. So, uh, yes. The second comment of the, is the absence of religious consciousness. The absence of religious consciousness is related, uh, very related to the ignorance yes. of imams and the teachers. Mm -hmm. I think because imams and the bishops are graduated yeah. from religious schools. Mm -hmm. And this really crisis in our yeah. Islamic societies that we depend on ignorant preachers. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. uh, when we, when you mentioned a very important thing related to Sira and Hadith. Mm -hmm. Because in Sira and Hadith, uh, there is a separation or a gap between religious society and civil society. Yeah. For example, we could and borrow only small quotations from outdated events yes. and outdated <coughs> uh, historical events that already uh, are outdated. Mm -hmm. So we want to bring these events nowadays just to relate them out to build over these events mm -hmm. our tolerance and our interreligious dialogue with the others. So I think this uh, we have to read 
think about this problem. I need not to bring our daily events and yeah. say that, okay, Prophet Muhammad said this and this and this. We can relate this only to these specific events that happen in this period. I need the historical context of events. So, uh, this is the Hadith Sira and Hadith. I want you to clarify for me this problem. Okay. So, the, you mentioned the Islamization of knowledge. That's true. But I think the concept of Islamization of knowledge is legal for me. I, I understand. You know, I'm a great, a great scholar. I'm talking to you, but I'm talking about Islamization of knowledge. Why? No, I like because actually my question was about the same topic Islamization of knowledge. Yeah, I can replace this. And I ask that question why we can replace it with accepting the other instead of saying Islamization of knowledge? Mm -hmm. So I think. To accept the other, it's better than Islamize, Islamizing them. For example, Professor Mikhail Bakula. He presented his very wonderful presentation around Trinity. So instead of criticizing this presentation, I say there is only one God and Christianity is wrong. I can replace this wonderful statement to accept the other instead of Islamizing the knowledge. So the last point, I'm sorry for my... Uh, no, please, please. Discussion. My interfaith and interreligious dialogue. You know the difference between interfaith and interreligious. We can't jump to interreligious dialogue if we can't make interfaith dialogue. Because, you know, in, in Muslim sects yeah. themselves, they are totally separated and they don't focus on interfaith dialogue. So we have, for example, if I want to build a monastery like this, I can't jump to the second floor to finish it and to go to the and so on. And the first floor, I, it doesn't have any columns, and it doesn't have bare uh, ground, or, or, or how can I say? I can't fix the roof without the ground, or to build a stone table. So, there is a gap between interface and interreligious dialogue. So this is important with religious versus civil schools. You know, I think in all Islamic world we have Islamic schools yeah. and we have civil schools. You know, in Egypt also, and, and the, the same situation in, in Pakistan, when we speak about religious schools and civil schools, unfortunately, the mentors and the professors who are working in religious schools, they all, all of them, I, I think 98% are graduated from also religious schools. And they are graduated on one basis just to reject the other, not to, not to accept the other. Mm -hmm. And we say in these schools, for example, when I say I'm graduated from civil school, in civil school, and you know, the majority of universities in Egypt, as you know, are secular universities. Yeah. There is only one university called Al Azhar University, which, yeah. which is religious. In Al Azhar University, they don't give a chance even to one Christian student to join the university. Mm -hmm. So, this is a real crisis. So, how can we bridge this gap mm -hmm. between interfaith and interreligious and move to religious versus civil school? Okay, so sorry for this. A great <coughs> uh, uh, Regards from your question, your comments, we are learning a lot. Not in this seminar, we call this. Thank you very much. First of all, uh, <coughs> about uh, Islamization of knowledge, the most yes. yeah. When I use the word Islamization of knowledge, I don't mean uh, that all the knowledge be Islamized. It means the Islamic knowledge nowadays needs modification according to the present demand. So get my I mean this. So because Islamization of knowledge, we have knowledge. You know, in Islamic literature, we have knowledge of science. We have knowledge of everything. So many things are invented by the Muslim philosopher, Muslim thinker, Muslim uh, of religious leaders. But what we did now, the scenario has been now changed. We have our different problems. For example, we are going for Imam Hanifa. Hanifa. He decided the thing 500, 600 years ago. Without any education. Now there is our demand different. Yes. We can't stand on this. We can't uh, stand on for power. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. Uh, we need ishtihad. We need to read the thing and our mind and go to the world what world demands from us. This means that we mustn't build our knowledge over Sia. We remember Sia. Yes, yes. 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 And <coughs> now we can't say only Muslim. Muslim community. Because Muslim is 
all over the world. Muslim is not only in Muslim country. Muslim are in other countries, in UK, in Russia, in America. And so how they will adjust their, themselves with, without losing their tradition, their culture, which is not uh, nowadays uh, <coughs> So it means, Islamization of knowledge means, we go the knowledge, we, we will be able, it means we will invite our people, invite Muslim to get the knowledge from all over the world. And then compare, which, which is the minus thing in our knowledge, so we can improve in this. The other thing, uh, the religious uh, yes, uh, it is very simple because we are not in practice. We are not practicing Quran. We are only reading Quran, mm -hmm. reciting Quran. We are not practicing. If we are go on practice, that will be no problem. And same thing with the Sira. We are very good. We are Milad and Sira and other and other Bukhari. What did actually Prophet Muhammad in his community, in his scenario, in his day. He changed so many things, so many cultures, and so many things he didn't change. And he changed the people. Not, he not bring the people from outside. He changed the same people. The people who was uh, among them, looting and killing, you know, and they changed the people, and they provide peace to their community. So, in short, and in the conclusion, ask your question, if you go on the practice, as I said, the world into action. We are in the stage of words, not action. We have to come in the age of action. Whenever we will come in the age of action, there will be no problem. And the next point regarding the absence of religious consciousness and the lot of finance and issues. Uh, I think uh, it is, again, please repeat. I mean the absence of religious consciousness, mm -hmm. which derives logically to the rule of finance and religious. Uh, I it, mean teacher who don't understand the religion. Oh, yes. Teacher? Teacher or imam. Imam. Da'wah. Da da he is not eligible for this. Yes, this is what I mean. Yes, he yeah. is not. If you don't know that, he is not eligible for this. As you know, there is some condition for him. But they are, they are authorized from the civil authority. Mm -hmm. But are they authorized from the civil authority in Pakistan as the same need also to promote such kind of violence towards people? They, they use the motions of the people. Yeah. They use the motions of the people. So people are going on. So the situation is the same. Mm -hmm. For example, yeah. uh, <coughs> when we have the paradise uh, the concept of who? Why? Who, huh? There was a bomb blast, and one terrorist injured, and he brought to the hospital. Okay, when they opened his eyes, there were three nurses for his treatment. He said, "Oh, I was told I will get seventy. He's only three. <laughs> so this is the motion. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They said yeah. they think they think they believe this. I will get this. They thought that they are sorry. This is." Yeah. This is the, the wrong use way of our Like what should be? Yeah, yes, what should be? Why 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 should be? So if the knowledge is there, if you, break, you wash your brain like this, what do you say? And you know this is not a, a any, uh, or any, 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 how do you say Prophet Hamad is trying? If the people, trying to moderate, moderate themselves, they are kidnapped. Medicine. They are kidnapped. And the very best said, my two sons, under 30 years age, one is MBA, one is MBS doctor, uh, before 15 months, they both are kidnapped by force. And still we don't know they are. Why? They are they are not missing uh, uh, these people, Imam. these mullahs. Yeah. I am under mullah, these mullahs. So, they lose. This is the problem.
Yes. Thank you very much. We have further comments. And uh, uh, I think Professor Abdul. Yes. yes. And then Afghanistan, which is published, you mean, uh, you know, uh, to, you know, uh, last uh, two decades, it's basically yeah. in, during the uh, uh, 70s and 80s, uh -huh. in the last century. Afghan, Russia, war. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I will uh, really, uh, I will be uh, really grateful to you if you uh, just, uh, you know, uh, uh, took more about the, 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 the very dangerous rule uh, which has been played by uh, Islamic uh, <laughs> religious and uh, how they affected you know, the, the Pakistani community and Afghanistan community. Because uh, if we you know, look at the uh, uh, Taliban, what is the meaning of Taliban? Taliban is a student of Islamic school. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, my uh, question. Uh, yeah. Really, if you could uh, uh, talk uh, more or explain about the rule of the Islamic uh, schools in Pakistan and Afghanistan and how they uh, affected the society, in, um, Muslim society in Afghanistan and, uh, and Afghanistan. Because uh, you know, many people they think that the uh, Islamic school is only dangerous to uh, non Muslims, yeah. uh, community, but this is the wrong idea. Uh, they are also um, very, very dangerous uh, to Muslim community uh, as well. Uh, because one of my point was the modification in syllabus. Modification in syllabus. <coughs> yeah. The main thing is in Islamic modalities, they teach religious literature. Yes. And they already in this period, 1780, yes. their lives, especially on jihad. Yes. And a wrong interpretation of jihad. This interpretation is not correct because jihad, a community, is not allowed to go jihad. Person not allowed to go jihad. Jihad will announce the government. And our government never announced the jihad. They people. So they, as uh, uh, my brother said, they brainwash the people. Okay? You see, well, in Afghanistan, Russia, Russia is coffer. You will fight and we will go to the direct <laughs> battle. This is that. <laughs> so this is. So it means nowadays and later, this is most important to uh, 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 our uh, thinking and our life about the Madan. So they are teaching, they should know what is jihad, what is terrorism, and what is other thing. This is not jihad. And Taliban, you know, what are doing Taliban? This is not Islam. We deny it. This is not Islam. This, this is only their thing. They are settling. But I know the people. I know the Imam. And before the war jihad, they will come to my friend and when go to bed, please give me some money, I don't have money for us. Transport. After one job, they have a large number of Pajaro uh, and uh, Toyota and other cars and build some what they have. So they collected the money on the name of them. Otherwise, I say, and for this, any, I separated from my son, I say, you selling the Islam, you sold the Islam for a few dollars and for a few months, for a few months. So this is our so, so whenever we will not be uh, uh, spared from this conflict intention, it will be not able to promote uh, Yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Your Just a short remark. <clears throat> Thank you very much, dear Professor and brother, for your presentation. And I, I say that from the bottom of my heart, believe me. I believe in the faith dialogue. I believe in the religious dialogue. 
I believe it a lot in this way of understanding the people from different religious identities. In my opinion, there are two fundamental elements in interfaith or interreligious dialogue. To be honest with you and with the others, and uh, to have sincerity in this dialogue. And, um, you know, until you will go in Pakistan, until you go in Iran or mm -hmm. other Islamic countries, you think that, oh, I will go there, I will find the fundamentalism, radicalism. <coughs> it's not true, believe me. It's not true. I was in Pakistan, I was in Iran. Yeah. The people are so nice, so polite, so kind. They appreciate your religious, your, mm -hmm. my Christian values, and so on. I think the major problem for a better understanding yeah. between religions today is the politics and the mass media. Yeah. Because in mass media, the mass media present different reality. Yeah. Through fake news, they will accuse someone by fundamentalism or radicalism mm -hmm. and so on. If we we resolve these problems, and I'm very skeptical in this. <laughs> we will be a family in the entire world, but you know we must be engaged in this horizon because we must, yeah. we can, we are able to change the things. Yeah. Starting from this meeting to another meeting, another conference, another seminar, and so on. And I appreciate your huge effort put in this engagement in interreligious and interfaith dialogue. Thank you very much. <coughs> Thank you very much, Padu, also. And you said very right, it is most important. And I hope we will bring the fruit from this conference for our deeds for the educations. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. More questions, more remarks? Yes, yes. Well, thank you, dear professor. Um, I learned much from your presentation. Uh, you mentioned three things uh, together uh, that I think reinforce each other. You mentioned religious tolerance, social development, and civil society. Yes. And uh, I believe it is it is it is true. I, I think you need the context of. Uh, a civil society with religious tolerance to, to have social development and to have peace, yeah. right? Uh, so my question is, you know, how do we achieve it? Uh, in, in Pakistan, and this is a question because I don't know much mm -hmm. about your society, you also mentioned uh, the NGOs and the role yes. of NGOs. Yes. And so this would be my question. What is the role of the NGOs in Pakistan in bringing about religious tolerance and help in the social development and in creating the civil society. Uh, do you see that this role is increasing? Yes. Or does the government you know, help them or prevent them from working? If you can yes, please yes, explain yes, this. Yes, a very good question. Uh, NGOs uh, in, from all over the world in Pakistan are very active. And their role is very positive. <clears throat> particularly in the time of crisis. Mm. When we have earthquake, we have flood, we have other day, very good. And religious tolerance, social development and society, <coughs> it means <coughs> tolerance is an action. Tolerance is a fruit. If you provide this fruit by social development, by the development of fruit, to the society, if you provide this fruit to the society, it means you are going to the development of your society. There are three big One is action, other is fruit, and third is implementation and synthesis. Mm -hmm. Are there also faith-based NGOs? Yes, yes, yes. Yes? Yes, yes. I have my own NGOs. Okay, okay. Uh -huh. GNPT, okay. Global Network for the Promotion of Tolerance. Okay. I have my NGOs. Very good. Another question. 
Okay, so there is one more question. Okay, okay. It'll be in Romanian, and I will okay, answer your question. Okay, okay. okay. okay yeah, thank you. Deci, întemeitorul religiei musulmane este Mahomet. The founder of Islamic religion is Prophet Muhammad. Acesta provine din tribul de lui Ismail. And he is from the Ismail tribes. Știm că Ismail a fost frate cu Isaac. And we know that Ismail was the brother with Isaac. Yeah, Isaac. Yeah. Isaac. 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 Mm-hmm. Children of yeah, uh, the Abraham. extinderea uh, religiei musulmane. The develop, the, no, develop yeah. of, of Islamic religion. S-a făcut 90% prin război. In ocupare. It may, uh, it happens to 90% towards to conquer the other territories. Întrebare. The question. Este aceasta o cauză pentru că Ismail calls this conquer of, of the territories. A fost alungat, Ismail a fost alungat, iar Iacob a fost iubit. This is caused because of Ismail was, you know, left outside from the house mm-hmm. and Isaac was loved. Okay. You feel that this is. Oh, yes. I, I don't feel this is because so vital and we and Christian and uh, <coughs> Ismail and Isaac. Okay? And we are, they are both brothers. Okay. And it means Muslim and Christian and Arab, we are brothers. Okay. <laughs> so there is no problem. No problem. That, this was not the reason. No, no, no. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a good topic, and we, we can discuss okay. uh, on Very the course. time of the round table. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because you know, I guess yeah. Yeah. Professor, I have a question for me. Yes. And uh, by permission of Professor Barkova, Professor Katerina. Yes. Is it allowed for me to talk? I, unless uh, Dr. Dura says otherwise, <laughs> <laughs> he's the headmaster, just his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Professor, uh, the honorable Professor, I, I mentioned that uh, 90% from Islamic religion demands you to attack and conquer the others, that's right? Yeah. yeah. And uh, I want to clarify this, Nick is uh, Sunday in English. Oh, okay. Oh, very so, cool. Uh, very cool. Uh, uh, yes, in fact, the Quranic. Yeah. Okay. Well, I would, like to, I would like to ask, yes. maybe or maybe clarify. I think I believe education is one of the most powerful tools, yes. uh, useful tools to build up a healthy society and to build up healthy individuals who yeah. can live in in a, a community. Actually, and I know the there is a tension between maybe state schools and religiously founded schools. So. How does this tension can be resolved? Uh, who controls the system of education? Who controls you know, what is taught at the state schools? And who controls what is taught at religious schools? Is there any curricula that they have to abide by? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a very <coughs> good uh, question. <coughs> because, for example, in my perspective, our country perspective, the religious institutions are run by the public. Mm-hmm. by the religious leader mm-hmm. and different school of thought and different school of thought uh, institution. Mm-hmm. The, both, the other education uh, run by the private sector and most of them by the government. By government. Mm-hmm. So therefore we are trying to bring mm-hmm. the, these religious institutions into mainstream of education mm-hmm. of uh, our government uh, controlled by the government. If we will be uh, succeed and we are going to have a very successful practice, and then I think there will be uh, no any tension and conflict because they uh, are going to the uh, right direction of education according to our present work. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Yes, any more comments, questions? Do we have more time, like maybe five minutes or no? No. Okay. Two o'clock. Two o'clock. <laughs> <laughs>